Well, my name is Joe Sedman, and I'm a relatively new member to this club. I joined, I think it was in June, someplace, and I uh, moved here from Joseph, Oregon, and I've uh, been fly tying flies for a long time. Um, I have a interest primarily in steelhead flies because that's what I like to fish for. And I, I took a lesson over at Patrick's Fly Shop in 1990. Uh, it was kind of a 101 fly tying thing. Uh, uh, Jimmy Lamatt, I think is the name, gave it. And, and he kind of taught you about uh, proportions uh, using the fly, uh, the, the hook for the scale, like the shank of the hook and the gap of the hook to get your different measurements for your different parts of your fly. And so you just kind of learn what the basics were. And then I thought, well, I really like this. So what I did is I started watching people tie flies. And I, I started going to a lot of the Fly Fishing Federation shows. And that's where all the, the people that really know how to tie flies, they're masters at it. And uh, if you want to learn to tie flies, is to watch people that really know how to tie flies tie them. And one of the things I learned is none of these guys tied the fly exactly like each other. Each guy has his own way of tying a fly. Uh, they're all basically close, but they've got different ways of measuring and different thread mani uh, manipulations. And <clears throat> the other thing I learned was that you want to try to use the very best materials that you can use when you tie a fly. Um, if you use a bunch of crap, that's just what you'll get. And, and it's, if you want to get tie flies, you got to be serious about it. And then the last thing, and it's the most important thing, is practice. There's just no other way to do a fly unless you practice. You just <laughs> unfortunately, we all have to go through that road, and it's just uh, there's no short way of doing it. So anyway, I've tied lots of flies and practice, and I've tore lots of them apart and tore them, uh, tied them over. <clears throat> this fly I'm going to tie tonight is it's a new fly I'm working on and it's for steelhead fishing and I don't even have a name on it and I haven't had very good luck with it because I haven't had I've been out fishing and there just hasn't been any fish anywhere caught where we fish. well I caught one fish on it yeah and I've caught I've caught some salmon on it and I've caught some sea run cutthroat on it so I know it works and anyway I'm just it's kind of in the infant stage <clears throat> The things that I have on there that are required are just, they're things that I have to have on that fly, and I'm not going to tell you why. Uh, I don't, it's a, there's a lot of long stories here for, for the why parts. Uh, what I'm going to do is just show you how I tie this fly. And uh, it doesn't take very long, it's pretty short. And uh, <clears throat> I'm going to use chartreuse thread because that way you can see where the thread is on the hook, or the shank of the hook. And... The first thing I got to do is I got to tie that that um, arrow tail, and it's a matter of uh, taking some chenille and, and twisting some hackle into it. And uh, that took me quite a while, a lot of trial and errors, to get that figured out. And I don't know if it's the right way or not, but I can make it work. And the length of this. Chenille is two times the length of, or the length of the shank of the hook because we're going to double it over. And my wife told me I should use a, a wet sponge instead of uh, putting everything in my mouth <laughs> for demonstrations. So I agreed. And I can take my glasses off because I can see a lot better without them. on these darn stupid looking jigs. Well anyway, I, I remembered that and I didn't measure that but all. Uh, this chenille is two times the, sh the length of the shank of the hook. Thank you. 
twisted it. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to palmer this hackle out so I get the, for the length. And I'm going to get make a pile over here, it's a lot easier. Try to get it where the, the hackles aren't zippering together on like a slopping feather. Get a measure on that. Yeah. Well, we've got it actually sort of like that. Yeah, I guess you can see it. Put it on your tape. There you go. Oh, there it is. Is that it? Or are you going to Are you going from the tip first? Yeah, I'm tying the tip in like okay. a, for a wet fly. Okay. okay. And it doesn't seem to matter whether you mount, which may, way you mount the, f the feather, whether it's this side or the bottom side up. When it's spun onto this chenille, it doesn't, it, it gives the same results, both in either direction. Well, what I've done here is I've tied in a little, so I have something to tie on to. And Now we're going to spin this baby together and make this little piece of rope. And I found that if you put the stem of the, uh, the feather down, when you fold it over, you find, kind of find the midpoint with your uh, bobkin and just lay it over in the middle and then it phases away from you. And then I take all these wraps I wrapped up on, take them off, and now I tie that about three times around that, which is plenty. And I unbuckle this, and then move everything to the center, and then I pull the pin. And it, you can see it's starting to spin up. So now I just cut this excess off. That, one, that's, that one's even prettier. Yeah, <laughs> well, <laughs> I've uh, it's been a long time since I've tied in front of people, and, and for some reason I'm shaky. <laughs> I, I uh, so now, like I said, we want to get kind of aggressive with this, and and uh, we're trying to tighten that up, get it really tight, and we also are going to train these hackles to lay in a in a. Uh, Direction facing aft. I get that in there, and then okay. Now the second thing this fly has to have is it has to have a beard. And I get my yarn. I buy my yarn. I haven't bought it for a long time, but I, I buy it from the Hallmark uh, card shop, and it's yarn that they use to wrap primarily Christmas presents packages. And when I went in and saw this, I, they had all kinds of colors, and I bought them all. Because <laughs> I figured I'm probably are never going to see these again. And uh, I bought enough to last me for the rest of my life, I guess. So anyway, I've got lots of yarn. And it's a three-stranded yarn, so if you unwrap them and set it out about a foot long, you still got two more pieces to work with. Now, when I put yarn on... Um, I like to have a nice sharp cut. This is for the beard. We take a soft loop, 
once, twice, then I can bend it down. Now we cut this beard as I pull it up, just kind of relax the thread, not real tight or anything, and I cut it off right at the point of the hook. And to see how that does, it, it just totally misses the point. And like I said, there's reasons for all of this stuff, and <laughs> it's a long story for all of it. <laughs> so the next thing is, this fly has to have white in it. And so I decided I was going to use a white hackle and just put a hackle, a couple, uh, about three to four turns of hackle uh, okay. ahead of this. As you can see in that picture, you'll see a little bit of white. Right there. It's a vibration, yeah, coming through from the roof. Again, a new tie and hackle in. Um, all these feathers have a sweet spot. you got to get to them if you want to tie flies that are neat and trim and they don't have big bulges and bulky spots and things on them. So you've got to get down to where that sweet spot is. And so what I'm doing is I'm going to palmer this hackle out like this. And I've tied, I'm going to take some of this zippered hackle off. So, and I've tied so many of these that I can tell about what four turns is. Oh, I just, again, the way the feather's going to look, I'm going to take a couple of those off. And then I'm going to wet this. I like to leave just a little bit of stem before my uh, before I start turning uh, the hackles down, so we can put a lot of turns on here and take this off. Now this is a thing I learned from watching guys that really tie really neat flies, and uh, let me get this hackle so it lays right. And what they do is they break this top row of barbs over the top row of the hackles. They bend them, they break them, so that when you wrap this and you want a wet fly hackle, they really are. You get both sides of the feather, and they're all. You get to use all the hackle on the fly. See, I broke those hackles, and now I got to take some water and train them back. It's kind of like trying to get a young 16-year-old boy's hair to comb that's got cowlicks. It takes a lot of water. I resemble that remark. <laughs> yeah. Enjoy it. <laughs> now what I'm doing is I'm, I'm just turning this with keeping these hackles in a backward motion and a tie. Each time I take a turn, I'm putting it right in front of the previous turn, but I try to keep them very tight. I don't need a lot of white here. I just need a, a little bit. I'll take one more here if it's more than I have. Well, it'll be all right. So now I take all those turns I put on and unwrap them. Now let's uh, take it off. There it goes. Two of them went forward, which they shouldn't, but that's okay. We'll trim them off. If you don't take these hackles out of the way, 
they end up coming in, showing up in the head of your fly, and then they're really a nuisance. So now we're just about to the end here, and we're going to put this red dubbing on. And there's, I pass those flies around. There's a lot of different colors you can use, and there's probably a hundred different ways to put dubbing on a thread. And I've tried each one of them numerous times, and I've come up with this method. That you know, I've got a Norvice, and if you ever watch Norm uh, Norlander tie, he just takes the dubbing and just starts spinning and it spins right on the thread and it looks just perfect. Well, it doesn't turn out to hold to be perfect. It doesn't so, work for us mere mortals that way. Well, if you want, you know, you can tie flies and if you want to tie flies that last and you can catch a lot of fish on one fly, there's a, that's why you do all this extra. This ice dubbing, I've uh, started using it for steelhead flies because it's got a, really has a lot of flash to it. There's a lot of different stuff in it. And they've got this dubbing now, it's a, it's a UV dubbing too. And boy, it takes a total different look once it gets say there's a hundred different ways of doing this I know um, all kinds of gadgets and stuff for spinning uh, line for dubbing but I made this out of a bicycle spoke what we want to do is we want to get this dubbing pretty heavy here because we've got to pick it out guys cut uh, tie flies and I did it many times I go to cut this thread off and I cut the wrong thread and oh, plunk yeah. it falls on the deal so I watch guys that did it and they take and push their finger and they push this thing away from it upward and you've got the one that you want to cut underneath the shank of the hook so you just reach up there and do it and man was that ever a god saver to learn that anyway we're gonna have to we're gonna tie this off right here As soon as, as soon as you can flex the hook, for me, the knot's tight enough. I've broke so many threads tying, learning that there's a point. And the point is, as soon as you can flex that hook, she's tight. Okay, now I'm going to put just one little drop on that knot. And what I use for my thread cement is I use uh, Sally Hansen's nail hardener. You can, well, I like to buy stuff that you can buy anywhere. You don't have to order it from back east or something. I can go down to Safeway and get this or Walmart or anything, but I can always get this stuff. Not as. Thank you, 
And I found that if you don't do that, then the fly comes apart somewhere along the line. <laughs> and you call it. So now, what we're going to do is we're going to pick this dubbing out. And I. You haven't yet? Pardon? You haven't yet? I've caught some fish. But not what I want to catch. As, not, the, not as many as I want to catch. But. I don't think anybody's been catching as many as they want to. Now these fish skulls, they have a, a heavy side and a light side. And I like to put the heavy side on top of my hook so that when the fly is in the water, the hook is in the up position so that when I get a hook a fish, I like to hook them in the roof of the mouth. Again, that's just me. And your tail is... Pardon? And that tail is pointing down. <coughs> yeah, yeah, it is. Right, it's pointing down. Exactly. <laughs> We're... With it, I guess. <laughs> That's still not far enough. Pull it up a little bit. So then when you tie your fly on to your tippet, do you tie it on upside down? No, it doesn't matter. It orients itself to be upside down. And whenever I tie a fly on to a tippet in a wet fly, I always tie a loop knot, oh, okay. a non-slip mono loop. And that way the fly is always oriented right in, the, in respect to the leader or the tippet material. Okay, we'll try this again. Okay, now it's good. Now I like to finish this off with a eight aught um, flame red thread, and that's just me because I like to have a fine little red uh, head on the fly. It's just me. And this head is what keeps this fish skull on the, on the shank of the hook. You don't use any glue or anything underneath it. Pardon? You don't use any glue at all. I will when I finish the head. <coughs> right, but I was... Oh, yeah, no. Mm -mm. No, I've got them tight enough, and, that, and like I said, that, that all that material slipped on the shank of the hook, and I've never had it that do that before, but... I'm kind of aggressive with it, I guess, tonight. <laughs> uh, like I said, it's been a long time since I've tied in front of people. I usually put three coats of, uh, of uh, head cement on these flies. Uh, I do the first one, it takes about 15 20 minutes for it to harden up, and then I put another coat on, and then I put one on the next day. It gives three coats, and it, the end result is it gives it kind of like a little red bead on the end. It, it uh, makes a very nice finish on them. Anyway. That's it. <laughs>